Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, I'm a nature photographer based in Northern California, and I recently moved from New England and I have FOMO. I miss those fall foliage photos and those opportunities to take pictures of the amazing leaves turning colors in New England, specifically New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. So today I wanted to talk about editing those fall foliage photos and getting the most out of them without overdoing it. So let's hop into it. So I love fall. It's just a great time of year. And I gotta be honest, I love California, but I miss fall. And there are leaves changing here, but it is nothing like what I experienced in New England. So I wanted to get in the kind of fall foliage spirit from afar and talk through how I would edit fall foliage photos and go through some tips and tricks that make it easy and a little bit of a lighter touch in editing these images, but still helping to make them pop. So I picked an image from my time in New England. This particular shot is from New Hampshire along the Cam Camagus Highway. It's from a pull-off that you hit um, as you're going into one of the major towns there, Lincoln, I believe. And it is just um, an extraordinary view and I happened upon it uh, at sunset and really loved kind of the vibe and what it looked like. So this is the unedited image. Um, it's really nice. I, I've got it here in the uh, profile of Adobe Color. I'll switch that over maybe to landscape, um, to, I'm sorry, to Adobe Standard. Uh, this is the camera standard for the camera that I used, which was a uh, D850 at the time. And this is a pretty nicely exposed image. You can see here, if you look up at the highlights and the shadows and see kind of where they're overexposed, we just have a little bit of overexposure uh, right now based on straight out of camera settings in the clouds up here. So um, other than that, it's a pretty nicely exposed image. And you know to address that, uh, we'll edit that in the image, but it's not a lot to do with the exposure settings here. I would say if you did have an image that uh, was kind of like peaking or maybe blowing out the highlights or a little bit too dark, really nice technique for adjusting that um, would be to hold down option if you have a Mac, or I think it might be shift if you have a PC. And when you push in option, you can then use the mouse and adjust the whites and the blacks. And it gives you this nice mask that shows you where they're blown out. So here we might, you know, drop down the whites a little bit. And it also works, by the way, for highlights and shadows. And we might just bring down the shadows, the highlights a little bit. Now that's a global edit. So that's doing it for the entire image. Now I would actually end up doing this for this particular image with the mask on the sky. And I'll show you how to do that. But just to let you know, you know, this is how you adjust it. You hold down option and you adjust the whites and the blacks, you can bring them down. It gives you kind of a different mask for that. So let's go ahead and reset that just so we have it. So just to address the sky here, which is a big deal, I'll use the masking features here and select only the sky. It's just gotten so good with Photoshop that you can really address this super easily. Now the, um, you know, the, the sky is, is pretty nice, but I would say it's a little bit blown out and it could use a little bit more punch. So what I would do here is drop the highlights a little bit and also go down here to dehaze and just dehaze it a little bit. This is going to bring out some of the texture and um, help uh, make it punch a little bit higher. Um, I think, you know, playing around with the uh, clarity just focused on the sky is not a bad idea here. It's nice to have that texture and clarity in the sky. I like when you have the definition in the clouds, it brings it out. Now, I think I'll still bring down the whites a little bit here because it is a little bit blown out and um, maybe increase the contrast a little bit. So you can see already, you know, just with that little edit, we're seeing kind of a nice, um, a nice sort of pop to the sky. Now I'm gonna adjust later some of the blues to bring those out a little bit more, but I kind of like the way the light falls off here and it's a little blown out, but it's not terrible. And it, the sky is really popping here. So the next thing I would do is just think about the vibrant slider. Saturation and vibrance are useful tools here Vibrance and saturation in this setting is a global edit. We can then specifically look at um, the specific colors that we wanna bring out here. But just as a general edit, I think bringing up the vibrance but not the saturation is a nice way to initially approach this. Something around like 20 is, is pretty nice. Um, now editing the specific colors is sort of the way, that's the area where you get the most bang for your buck when it comes to editing these fall foliage shots. Now, people tend to overdo it, in my opinion. Um, when you look on Instagram and stuff like that, it kind of caters to the over, overdone color shift. 
Um, you know, people use the hue saturation and luminance panel here, which is what this is, and they shift the hue. And this is really artificially, in my opinion, sort of shifting the colors that you've got here in terms of um, what you saw. And, and I don't, that rubs me a little bit the wrong way, but you know, do what you're gonna do in each their own. But instead of adjusting the hue, what I do is I mainly mess with the saturation and the luminance. Now we mentioned blue. So the first thing I would do here is I would actually bring down the luminance of the blue. Now this is gonna bring that sky down and um, really make it punch and give it kind of this nice color. I like the way that looks, but you might feel like it's overdone a little bit. Luminance and saturation tend to move hand in hand. So when you, when you drop the luminance, it's going to make the saturation look a little bit more vibrant. Now, if you want it to match, you would also want to bring down the saturation. Now, the same thing will go for luminance going the other direction. When we increase the luminance, we're kind of watering down the image. And if we want that color saturation to sort of match what we saw initially out of camera, we want to raise the saturation as we raise luminance. So let's look at the individual colors for the fall foliage colors here, specifically orange and red and a little bit of yellow. So for orange and red, I'm gonna raise the luminance. You see how that's popping in this area? I love the way that looks. Look at that come out there. And I'm gonna increase the saturation a little bit. I don't increase it the same amount as luminance. So for example, I'm increasing at 20, say, let's just say 20 here on luminance, and I'm gonna increase it maybe a max of half that, like 10 on saturation. I'm gonna do the same type of treatment here for the reds. I'm gonna bring out the reds by about 20 and I'm gonna increase the saturation by about 10. And you can see here, we've already brought out some of that nice color, but we're not overdoing it. Now, yellows are interesting. You know, we could go, we could bring out the yellows here. You can see what it's doing. You can play around here, or we could actually bring them down. Now, in this particular case, I like this bringing them up because I think we're kind of in a stage here with this shot where it's pre-peak. So there's a lot of green and a lot of yellow still in the image, and it's that fresh kind of color transition of the of the yellow to greens to yellows that is kind of nice in this image. So I'm actually going to give it a very similar treatment to what I did before. Now you could argue for going the other direction though um, to just accentuate the yellows and the oranges. Now finally with green, you know we can we can see that again. We can play with the with the luminance slider to see what we're affecting. There isn't a ton of green in this image despite it being kind of a green scene. I'm going to also increase those greens um, because I, I see them kind of highlighting this area along the pine tree and I like that. I'm not going to mess though with saturation for greens because I don't want to overdo it. Now I like the way that looks, but I think this area here is looking a little bit underexposed and this is maybe looking a little overexposed. So what I'm going to do is just use a brush and I'm going to paint on the areas where I want to raise exposure and in this case shadows and paint separately in a mask on the areas that I want to drop down. So let's just kind of paint sort of generally around there and I'm going to raise up those shadows a little bit as a way to highlight those colors. I'm paying attention to here to make sure that we're not clipping any of the highlights or anything, but it's looking pretty good. Um, so that's a nice exposure there. We might also kind of raise up those whites a little bit. And in this case, we could go back to saturation panels, but because we're affecting all the colors we like here, I'm just gonna globally raise the saturation for that mask. And now separately, I'm gonna create another mask here and I'm gonna use the brush and I'm just gonna brush this area here. And I'm going to drop this area because this is not the area where I want your eye to go. So one way to do it is to drop down the whites but I actually think just dropping the exposure is not a bad idea here. Maybe drop the blacks a little bit too. So we're really accentuating that. That's a little overdone. I don't know if I'd love the way that looks. So I might just drop the shadows a little bit. I'm trying to be a little less heavy handed. So there you go. That's kind of a nice edit, I think. Um, it's not a huge uh, crazy thing to do here. I think we could also increase dehaze if we wanted to really make it pop. So you can see if I if I increase dehaze, this is a very heavy handed tool, so be you know easy on it. But if you increase dehaze a little bit, maybe increase the clarity a little bit, you know, that's one look that you might like. I don't really like when the clarity pops for fall foliage shots. In fact, I think it kind of looks better with less clarity. Um, so I tend to keep it around zero and not really mess with it too much. Um, for a crop on this shot, I don't love this down area as I've kind of talked about, so I would probably do a four by five and crop it kind of right around there. 
so that you know there's a little bit of a of a diagonal here but it kind of ends at the end edge of the frame but we keep that sky that we really like so that's sort of how i would edit that shot you know that's what it was out of camera a pretty nice shot straight out of camera but if we you know look at the final product here it's you know it definitely is a a, a more dramatic shot now finally i might go back here and look at option and just bring up those whites a bit um in this case like i could bring them up quite a bit i tend to not go past like say 30 um, 35 because i think it's overdoing it this is really what i do at the end of an image because i tend to underexpose images um, when i'm editing them and i like to revisit that at the end and make sure that i i sufficiently um exposed it and that's me that's honestly majorly because i use a, a macbook that has this incredible screen and the images look so good on the screen and then when i take them off my computer and go to print or post somewhere else they don't look quite as good as as how they were when i brought them right out of camera um onto my screen so uh that's pretty much what i would do i mean there are other tech the other things we could do we could mess with the calibration panel which I don't typically mess with. Um, we could look at a post exposure vignette, which is kind of nice if you want to highlight a certain area. So that's sort of a stylistic choice, but it does bring out these colors a little bit more um, because it, it detracts a little bit from here. But, um, you know, I we could maybe add a little bit of that there, but it's not too much. This area here in the sky, you know, if, if we wanted to go a little bit further, we could use um, a brush and kind of like bring down those highlights a little bit just to kind of make it a little bit more, um, I don't know, evenly exposed there in the clouds. But yeah, that's that's how I would edit that shot, um, you know, to bring out those colors and to not overdo it too much and retain the original beauty of the image. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Please let me know how you edit your shots or if there are other um, questions you might have about this. But that's the general approach I would take for fall foliage photos. And it was nice to revisit one of my uh, trips up there to New Hampshire. So I will talk to you next time and I hope you're doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.